Black white mid range. So entomb is a good reason to go into black. However, I don't think I don't think if reanimator is mid range or it can be mid range and controlly. But usually if reanimator is mid range and controlly, it's blue based and you have a bunch of counters. So instead, I'm gonna pack one, pick one this marsh flats and hope the blade splicer wheels. And maybe we can be like blade splicer resto black white. You think Entomb is mid-range? You think a turn two fuck your face grizzle brand is mid-range? Come on. Come on. Joey Jordanson? That's a uh, slipknot, right? Jeez. Died today, and that's a fucking kick in the junk. Yeah, I uh, looked up to him as a drummer. Let's grab this Stoneforge Mystic. Pick two. Hopefully, Will and the Cauldron complete. We'll see. If we take him the Entomb, we'd be taking Dark Ritual here. Signet makes sense. Kaideon's a little aggro. Let's take Signet. Removal spell. Another Signet. Let's get a removal spell. Or are we a smokestack deck? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Is Smokestack mid-range? Smokestack can fit into a mid-range shell. I'll take the I'll take the removal spell. Interesting pack. So Sword of Fire Nice plays well with the Stoneforge Mystic, and then there's also Vista and Grim Monolith, which are nice pickups. I'm gonna grab the sword. You think Smokestacks will wheel? Maybe. If someone's doing the workshop thing, then they might grab Smokestack. That's where I most like it. I think Gideon makes sense here. I think Selfless Spirit's okay. I think I'm gonna do the Gideon. Some big old chonky planeswalkers. Bitter Blossom would be good, so would uh, like some discard, right? Some Thoughtseize, Duress, Inquisition, him to Turok, that sort of thing. Yeah, Stax is usually seen as like a prison type card, which is not really the same thing as mid-range. But I've definitely played Smokestack in a lot of cube decks that were like more mid-range than Prison. It, the There's just so, like, so many value spells in the mid-range shell that made the Smokestack look good. Oh, Batter Skull. This is turning out to be a good Stoneforge. Even if the Cauldra doesn't wheel, like, hell yeah. Half the time it feels like Eureka. I think my win rate with Smokestack is pretty high, actually. I would not compare it to Eureka. It does need a very specific sort of deck. And you need to know when it's bad. Leave your opponents better at dumping their hand than you, then you board it out. 
called her complete wield. Chupacabra is such a good mid-range card, but... We're forging stone today. Beautiful Stoneforge Mystic package. I wish I could give I wish I could draft more Stoneforge Mystics now. The one reanimation spell we saw was Shallow Grave, but we'd already passed in Tomb, and then we passed it on the wheel as well. Oh, shit, Evie Geddon makes the sub, makes the two months. Hello, Demonic Tutor. Awesome. And all of a sudden, Black made sense. Now we have another Stoneforge Mystic, we can detutor for it. Gaunti's Dees, O Ring's Dees, Elishrun's a good top end card. We already have a 7 drop, though. Oh, shit, what up? If they kill your Stoneforge Mystic. Ultra cost seven. Let's grab Gaunti. Let's shoot it up. Hey, Thasgar TV. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the three months. Appreciate it. Gaunti's sweet. Gaunti is sweet. So there's a sweeper here in Toxic Deluge. I think I want Council's Judgment. Council's Judgment is like a really good removal spell. One of the best. Ooh, so there's one of the, there's that dress that I wanted. But there's also a shambling vent and a pack rat here. I'm gonna take the dress. And hopefully shambling vent wheels. I don't know, we'll see. Hell yeah, Thoughtseize. Or do I want Palace Jailer? Seems like a really good Palace Jailer deck. I want them both so badly. I'm gonna take the Thoughtseize, but holy shit, hum. Palace Jailer's basically with power. Just take two, yeah, right? Corsa Portal. Corsa Portal with a removal spell tacked on. <laughs> yeah, anytime a card is actually two cards, right? <laughs> you know it's fucked up. Hey, Nilzix takes the sub, thanks for 19 months. I don't actually like Freebooter that much, as highly as I was valuing Dress and Thoughtseize. It might just be the grab here, though. Shieldred and Nugent are lo looking like they're a little bit above our curve. And so then the, the other cards to consider would be Wingmare and Hangerback. Wingmare is more of a sideboard card, and Freebooter would potentially make the main deck, especially with like Sword of Fire and Ice to throw on it. He actually uh, voted for something that the opponent didn't vote for when they played a Council's Judgment the other day. Can any of y'all who didn't see that game guess what it was? There's only a few times where I think it's correct to vote for not what your opponent votes for with Council's Judgment. It was indeed Mana Crypt. But yeah, Treachery and Control Magic, so the other one, where they Council's Judgment and they vote on your... Um, your control magic, but then you want to vote on the creature so they don't get the creature back. I'm gonna grab the recruiter actually of the Sword of Feast and Famine. Oh, Vindicate. Just a 
poor boy, though my story's seldom told. I squandered my resistance for a pocket full of mumbles, such are promises. All lies and jest, still a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. Recruiter can grab the Ebon Death. The Ebon Death. The Drake Lick. Hey, walk with our rhythm next to 42 months. A Merry Cubus to all. You hope we don't get vintaged. We'll definitely get vintaged at least one game, right? That's just how vintage keep works. We have a whole other pack, though. We basically have a deck built and we get a whole other pack. The uh, Sulfur Vince didn't wheel, unfortunate. So we're mostly looking for fixing in pack three here. That helps a bit. Black Lotus is fixing. The Godless Strand would also be fixing, but Black Lotus is fixing. All right, get back in here, Hero Blade Holden. <laughs> you got some work to do. Let's grab a bit of Blossom here. I like Resto out of this pack. Blink that Blade Splicer, Blink Recruit of the Garden. Damnation was also an option. I need yet more equipment. Umi's always plays really well with Bitter Blossom. To be fair. The Warhound. I already got the Warhound. We're gonna have to make more cuts too. Yeah, a little bit of dead guy elm. So we're thinking about cyborg cards, ECD, Worm Coil Engine, and Liliana all could do stuff. ECD could even make the main deck. I think I'm gonna throw the Liliana in the sideboard. We're we'll kinda of have Worm Coil already covered with Batter Skull and uh, Umizawa's. We can bring in Liliana on the play against decks with a bunch of like mana dorks and stuff. I think Gideon's gonna be a sideboard card too. Would I play more than 40 in this deck? No, absolutely not. I want to draw this Stoneforge Mystic as often as possible, because it's a very good Stoneforge Mystic. Deck does look awesome. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Fixing's gonna burn me though. Should've grabbed the shambles. Should've grabbed the shambling vents. We're gonna have 17 lands, but we're gonna count Black Lotus as a land. Torn Bear. Hey! That helps. <laughs> that helps a lot, actually. The difference between like some fixing and no fixing is pretty huge. The shrine pack should be the next pack, but like the sulfur falls didn't wheel in the uh, second pack, so I wouldn't expect it to. The god that's trying to wheel here. Almost a Bob deck. I think I'd rather have the Masker Worm in the sideboard though. 
Especially because the main deck slots are so tight. And Massacre Worm just beats some people. Lane tax is not only not fixing, it's also not, not playable. I will, on occasion, board in land tax on the draw, depending on my deck, but it's very rare. We're gonna draft the Progenitus there, because it's a black-white card. If it's a step better. Is Lane Tax the worst card in the queue? It might be. It might be, yeah. Hey, cannot win next to the something for 38 months. Lane Tax almost exclusively relies on your opponent to just like be a bad player. Not always. Not 100 percent of the time. But usually when that card is good, it's because someone fucked up. Can I win with 30 months? Saying the number of months I've subscribed to your channel is now 38. Yeah, heck yeah. And then some, there's the Vintage Cube games that are like, even when land tax pays off, the game still ends before the extra lane drops can matter, before the thinning can matter. So the range for it to be, for, uh, for land tax to be good is pretty narrow. It used to be a lot wider, because back in the day, the uh, the mulligan rules were way different. And obviously, if you're building and constructed, you can, like, build your deck around land tanks, right, with, like, mox diamonds and that sort of thing. Bit harder to do that in cube. Oh, shit, what up? Hey, Dead Sense thinks the sub thinks the seven months. So in terms of sideboard cards here, I'm thinking about pitching this Golgari Signet. I think we can keep the Revoker in. The Hero Blade Hold is just nutty with Black Lotus. Just like turn one hero dead you. But I think that's enough reason to keep it. I might cut this Pack Rat. Pack Rat's like pretty mid-rangey. Plays well with our discard. Put it as a potential cut. How should one play against land tax? Uh, if your opponent has a land tax, you don't have to play into it and give them three cards. What I think is usually correct is you just like put them on the play. You just pass the turn back. And then if they don't want to play lands, that's fine. <laughs> you can just like chill for a bit. Sculpt the perfect hand. Decide how to kill them. It's much, much better to put the uh, the opponent on the play than it is to let them recall every turn, right? And then if you put them on the play and you never trigger the land tax, you've already, like, gotten your card back because they spent a card on the land tax. So they're not even, like, up on a card like they normally would be. Revoker is usually a main deck card for this type of deck. Very disruptive, black-white, carries equipment well. It's a recruit of the guard tutor, too. Like, the opponent's got some obnoxious planeswalker where you can tutor up Revoker and name it. Yeah, I think Revo uh, Revoker belongs. Unfortunately, the Draco Lich doesn't look amazing, but it is a nice turn one Black Lotus play. Calder Complete is not only necessary, it's our best Stone Forge Mystic target. So if I was going to cut an equipment, it would probably be the Sword of Fire and Ice here, followed by Batter Skull. And then Cauldre and Umizawas would be very close. I'm not cutting any of these equipment, though. They're all great. Maybe I'll sideboard the Opposition Agent. Boarded in versus green decks that are doing a lot of tutoring with, like, green Sun Zenith and Natural Order. And like combo decks that are playing like a lot of D tutors. And 
Nighthawk Scavenger. We don't need Nighthawk Scavenger, because we have Batter Skull to gain life and Umizawa's. I just like having life gain in a deck with Bitter Blossom, but we don't need it here. It also plays well with our discard. Cool. Uh, I don't think Cultures replace Batter Skull. I think they play both for the most part. I think Hammer Time might only play one. And I think they lean towards Cauldre over Batter Skull. Does depend on the deck. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, they're playing Luris. Silly meme. Yeah, they don't have either. I was probably thinking about an older list. When Culture first got printed and people exploring or something. It feels like modern it still feels like Modern Horizons 2 is new to meme. Even though it's like been a bit now. What kind of mood am I in the song for? What kind of song am I in the mood for? Lincoln Park Ska? We could do that. I wasn't going to, but if we have a request... I think I want the brain freeze, but maybe I want this turnabout, hum. Yeah, usually these decks have multiple win cons, but only a few enablers. ever. <laughs> Can you imagine like playing at a like a sports stadium? <laughs> and they're just <laughs> your your side is just shouting at you like, "Hey! <laughs> the other team's sweet. I'm a root for them now." <laughs> boo, boo, you suck. I guess that'd just be like playing for Philly, huh? Just a Chargers home game. <laughs>
When your parents came to your piano recital? Oh no. Oh no. Hey Shinji, thanks for 47 months. Well, hello there. I kind of want to take this spiral to like strip it out of their deck, but I should probably grab like the treasure cruise hum because I might actually cast that. Seven in the graveyard too. Kind of looks like they're gonna flash it back here. All right. Oh shit! What up? Hey, Terrain got two, two, one, one. Thanks to the sub. Thanks to the tier one. So here, a blade hold gives me the best clock. I think I want to vindicate something though. Bergine. Definitely should have pulled that time spiral. I like how we played like a disruption spell like every turn of the game. We're just getting destroyed. <laughs> they had too many draw sevens. We couldn't keep them off them. Game two, if we have to blind name Revoker, probably gonna name Mox Ruby. From what we've seen here. High tide again. It's pretty fucking good. Can you see the storm count? It's enough. It's fucking enough. <laughs> it's at seven. <laughs> they can win with whatever they want. side of Bergy. Oh, the horn. It's a line. I think if you're gonna blind name, though, it's because, like, your opponent doesn't have much in play. So it's better to name the Mox. I think Mill is a better deck than Enchantress. Especially with the new, um, the new Mill spell. Idiot's Laughter. That card's pretty real. At least it felt weird one league I played with it. Can they just fizzle? Well, they have seven cards in hand and a horn in play. I don't think they can. I don't think they can fizzle. Yeah. <laughs> just giving them a sec here. Potentially show me more cards. Potentially not. They have seen most of their deck at this point. Uh, 
gonna run with it. Back spin, go nuts, have fun with it. Take it back to the days at the high top phase in a plastic cup with some rum in it. There's only one life to live. Wanna give it all tonight, tonight. Well, we know they have brain freeze in the deck because we saw it earlier. It could have been underneath this uh, freebooter. Now that I see their backup wing con is empty, the Warrens. I kind of wish I'd grab the Past in Flames. Talonkron can give them infinite mana. Because of double high tided and there's a mana flare there. I disagree, PK Slime. I think we lose to the draw seven. Pretty much no matter how we do it. The one that was chilling in their graveyard that they flashed back and got things rolling. Draw sevens are pretty good to resolve against the discard deck. Good evening, Zyphon. Eight copies of High Tide. It's a lot of copies of High Tide. Why are we still playing? To watch them resolve eight copies of High Tide. Why else would we be playing? Alright, now they're just going for the win. We didn't actually see a tutor, did we? For Opposition Agent. I think we just saw Draw Sevens. I don't think their de their whole deck can beat a fucking Narset, but we don't have a Narset. I kind of want to bring in Masker Worm, just in case they have to go for the Empty the Warrens plan. There is no way a clock win is going to happen in this matchup. <laughs> My opponent's not a slow player. We did pass Thalia and Wing Maryam. Oh well. Bitter Blossom is slow. Is it slower than the the Elon death? Tricky Mage. All right, that's valid. Oh yeah, fast master. Hell to the yam.
What do I do to do for him, if anything? Be sort of fire nice. If I could cast a rest here, I would grab that. Maybe the negate makes sense. Yeah, let's grab the negate. Play some weird blocker. I can get it. Black Lotus is a pretty good one. I mean, I don't consider Grizzlebrand to be a mid-range card. I do consider Stoneforge Mystic to be a, uh, a mid-range card. We just happen to draw Black Lotus and make it look real saucy. And now we just need to do that again. Piece of cake. Sword was lethal. We drew a land. The Vindicate's also lethal, right? So we have seven in play and that's seven. But you can cast the Vindicate whether you draw a land for the turn or not. Black Lotus is a mid-range. That's a fair point. Should I board out Black Lotus? I hate to go against the step. I really like turn one thought season to turn to him, but uh, the same doesn't necessarily do that, right? Fuck. Discard spell. Discard spell. How did I slag Lotus into Lotus Bloom with Freebooter? I played a turn one off Black Lotus on the play. I want to vindicate that Moxer B. Hopefully that's not super wrong, um... Come on, discard! Come on! Come on, discard! <laughs> Do I have a second wait for my hero blade hold game? I'm just gonna pass here, rest of Link Stone Forge. Go get a uh, sort of fire nice. Fuck. Looks like we're gonna be a turn too slow here. Any discard at all would have been quite nice. We have quite a lot of it. <laughs> it's Freebooter, into Turok, Duress, Thoughtseize, Demonic Tutor for any of that. 
All right. Well, maybe this Twister doesn't just stone win for them. Probably should have played the Resto, even though I was gonna have to like lose the. I guess the benefit is like I might get a, a Batter Skull that I can like put into play with Stoneforge Mystic now, after letting the draw seven resolve. We have three pieces of equipment in here. The odds of us not finding it. Equipment weren't great. When it only has 12 mana available. Which means that they have infinite storm and infinite mana. You know, red. They might just be, like, generating mana to play a draw spell. So I'll leave the chat up. So just chill. You cannot reveal cards in hand on Moto until the game's over, for whatever reason. Hey, Terra Tomb, thanks for the sub, thanks for the three months. In this sort of situation, though, I would disbelieve them. I don't think they're looping Palancron, just like hoping that I scoop or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you save so much time on Moto, like, with, uh, Moto, like, handling the shuffling and stuff for you, but every once in a while it would be nice. If we boarded in the Progenitus, would we have been good here? I don't think so. We just look, we draw the Progenitus. Yeah, we would have been good if we boarded it in, because we have Pack Rat. So we would draw Progenitus as our last card and go Pack Rat activate. <laughs> And just every turn make a rat and discard progenitus. Dang. Hey, delaying shield. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the nine months. Guess I should have tried it out, huh? Maybe minus Umizawas or something. Would have been hot. Progenitus isn't in the step. It's a black-white card. One of the draw sevens beat that? I don't think so. Why would it? They just like undoes, undoes their own brain freeze. Yeah, the things could have come out. Is it, it was in there for the same reason, like, as our other removal spells, right? Like, maybe removal blocker. But we attack for lethal. Only splash for Time Walker Ancestral. Well, I wasn't going to cast a Progenitus, was I? If you're not going to cast a card, it's not a splash. Playing an Iona in your reanimator deck doesn't suddenly make it not mono black. <laughs> Our Lotus is fucking squaring off. Probably I may be supposed to take the Cauldron Complete. I don't know. They can witness back to Black Lotus. It's kind of an issue.
But we can't vindicate because of the ECD. Mm -hmm. The uh, soldier doesn't want to attack because then the Elspeth would be able to get Eternal Witness back for freezies here. Next turn we can Demonic Tutor for Stoneforge Mystic and have our own call to complete. Maybe not. This is the first deck that we drafted tonight. This is the second deck that we're playing tonight. Yeah, we can still Demonic Tutor for Stoneforge Mystic. I'm gonna do that next turn. Why let them have a Call to Complete? I think I would rather be the only person who has one. Yes, Cauldra is indestructible. Why, why is this a question right now? Why are people questioning whether Cauldra is indestructible? You're talking about for Vindicate? Yeah. You can't Vindicate Cauldra. You can Council's Judgment it, but we didn't have the Council's Judgment at that point. Game one. Lotus Duel. Were they tutoring? Oh shit, what up? Usually you only play Calder Complete if you have Stoneforge Mystic. Hey, Pier Zero, thanks to the sub, thanks to the 54 months. Yeah, because I was talking about the next turn, Sandman Daniel. So if they go land number seven and play Cauldre Complete, then my turn is going to be Stoneforge Mystic for my own Cauldre Complete. Because they whiffed on their mana and just like played some shitty two drop, it was better to vindicate their Black Lotus. And then I can tutor for the Cauldre Complete the next turn, and then I'm the only one who has a Cauldre Complete. That's what I was trying to get across when I said never mind. Maybe not. A change of plans. Based on change of play, expected play from the opponent. For sure, for sure Spider Technician. These are all cards that like kind of make sense. We saw like 8-mana dork. 8-bombing MTG, thanks to the sub, thanks to the 9 months. Kinda want to cut the Sword of Fire nice. It's a good card, but the protections aren't relevant here, and I have plenty of other equipment. And, uh, you know, I'll cut this one, too. Be a little bit more disruptive. Do I want Masker Worm or Opposition Agent? Neither.
It's a bit slow, but we're already on a, on already on a mulligan here. We need like a discard spell. Every hand without a Black Lotus just like really wants to have like Duress or Thoughtseize. Or him on two or something. Limbala here, and then just next turn vindicate the Crocus. Bad Vindicate. We do have this Draco Lich in hand though. Might be fun to play. Uh, we didn't get Lotus until pack three. When we first picked it. Mini opponent both hitting each other's lands. Love it. Might actually not get Calder complete here. Like red batter skull. Oh no, but there's a cause like pride mage. Yeah, next turn we can. Uh, if we need to play the cauldron defensively, we can. The weed is passed with our mana up, and then if they do nothing, we can like flash in the the, uh, the ebon death, and then on tap it go like pack rat cauldron, attack for ten or something. Nice CMFP. That's awesome. Yeah, the haggis horns are pretty good. Tank last turn. Yeah, so I wanted to leave up the uh, the Ebon Death, the Drago Lich. But then like knowing they're gonna strip mine my white source made more sense. And hopefully it's fast enough. We'll see. <laughs> we shall see. Interesting, John Thaxton. There's always rats in the banana stand. Thanks for sharing. Not enough people come in with words of wisdom like that. Were we dead if they just played Wake last turn? I mean, we had blockers. They also didn't have the mana last turn, right? Remember that they tapped out for Solemn. How did the Solemn go to the yard? The Solemn blocked. 
the song blocked because they wanted to draw a card to try and find an answer to the um, cauldron. Cauldron does exile, but the exile is a triggered ability that happens after damage. So the way that Cauldron's ability is relevant is if you attack something that would live from getting hit by a 5-5. Five five. Like if your opponent had a 10-10 or whatever, they couldn't just sit there and block Cauldron complete with it over and over. Yeah, once the creature's in the graveyard, it's a different object. There's a lot of text on that card. Fuck all this business, huh? Oh, it's definitely worse than Death Touch. That's not an almost, that's a... <laughs> the only time it's better than Death Touch is if they're blocking you with like an indestructible creature, right? And most of the time you'd rather have Death Touch for the extra trample damage. Have his tips happen? Someone donates for a tip. They're like, yo, Caleb, can I donate for a tip? And I'm like, sure, no problem. It is a, um, requires some cooperation between a viewer stipulating an idea and the streamer running with it. Just trade pack rat with a manga here. There is no discount of its storm. I usually charge twenty dollar dues for a stipperino, but for storm, for storm, because it's you, because it's you. 25. And that's a first time Stipper's discount right there. I don't offer that to just everybody. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's my whole turn anyway. But like they could have played out that Dragon's Rage Channeler and chose not to. So it's pretty clear they had something. I'm just glad I wasn't punished with like a drain or something after deciding to hero blade hold instead of him. Kalki is in the cube, so is Mana Link and a bunch of other crazy shit. Lane next turn's nice, because we can hit him into the Elspeth. Yeah. 
I think I'm gonna minus Revoker and plus Bone Shredder, or maybe plus Damnation, or maybe plus Liliana. One of those fucking things. Some goddamn card, and some obnoxious goddamn card. And... I just want something a little bit more robust or value laden than Revoker. Maybe a few things that died to Liliana. Let's try it out. A brutal S word. Yeah. This is weird. Feathers is a little expensive. I kind of like my expensive cards to play well with Black Lotus, and Fate's Feathers doesn't really. Sounds track. Yeah. Oh shit. Do y'all see what I see in this hand? Do y'all see a mulligan? I've been two cards here. Your ladle was good last time. Let's try that again. No, last draft from yesterday was a blue red artifact deck that trophied. It's our first draft of the day, though. Elspeth? Yeah, let me tell you something about turn 3 Elspeth. It's not very good by itself. You kind of want other stuff. Now, if you're turning to turn 3 and Elspeth while disrupting the opponent and developing your board, that's different, right? It's a whole different monkey. Whole different barrel of fun. Rather than put them to two, I think it's better to keep the soldier back to offer to block this rag band, right? And when it's also a little tight on mana, a little toy. Yeah, so we had kind of a rough matchup in that first round against the uh, the discard deck versus the deck with three plus draw sevens and a bunch of other card draw. That was rough. It's possible I had some lines to, to do better, and I definitely should have boarded in Progenitus in retrospect. But in the future, I'll be more likely to, to embrace that kind of idea. 